strangely. Lovely day for it. Did you hear? The circus is coming to town. Should clear up soon, I imagine. Do you remember when we used to swim in the river? I, I don't. Here. You seem a bit sick. Oh, did I just forget? Oh, it happens, you know. Come out. Come out, wherever you are. Look at him! They've got blood all over them! John! Get away! Come out. Come out, wherever you are. Down up! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> There's the one that gets him. He's covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. They got blood all over him. Save a bit for the next minute. <laughs> Look at him. They got blood all over him. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. The killer's right there. Get him. All right, lovely day for it. You feeling all right, sir? Vengeance! We're life for noise. Pop a joy. <laughs> oh, 
I did think I used to run a hundred bases. Pace yourself, Arthur. Jesus. Oh, my God. I wish I kept in shape. Woof. I can't keep doing this. We'll laugh about this later. Maybe I should sit down for a bit. We'll laugh about this later. Bloody hell. Oh, bloody hell. doesn't kill you.
I don't think I've been in Hayworth Labs since Harry Hayworth gave that big tour a few Sorry, years ago. Sir. There has been a slight hiccup in the disposition of the lab, and it is currently in isolation. No one in, no one out. Please come back later. Uh, but but uh, I'm, uh, I'm a reporter. I'm supposed to interview Dr. Verloc. Oh, I hope he hasn't forgotten. Oh, a journalist, eh? Have you got your press pass? I uh, left it at the office. Well then, you'd best go back and get it, haven't you? So a press pass gets me in. Amazing what people will do to get in the newspaper. Maybe I can go talk to Mrs. Oliphant at the Eau Courant. See if she's got a spare press pass. Jesus. Oh my God. Getting late, isn't it? And it's time for all good citizens to be getting ready to go to bed. Would you like me to read you a bedtime story? Of course you would. Well, gather round, citizens, gather round. And I'll tell you a bedtime story. Tonight's story is called Little Red Riding Hood. Once, a young woman was told by her older sister to bring a pie and some milk to their mother who lived in the forest. The young woman was known as Little Red Riding Hood because she was not very tall and she liked to wear a red cloak that her mother had knitted for her because it went with her red red hair and her red red mouth. As she was walking through the forest a wolf came up to her for in those days wolves roamed free in the woods. The wolf asked her, Hello, little English girl, where are you going? Little Red Riding Hood was not afraid of wolves, and she had a very good knife in her basket. I'm going to my mother's house in the woods, said Little Red Riding Hood. Ah, which path are you taking? asked the wolf. The low road or the high road? The low road, said Little Red Riding Hood, for it was the shortest. Ah, then we must short part ways, said the wolf, for I'm taking the high road. And Little Red Riding Hood took the low road? and the wolf took the high road. But the wolf could travel very fast when he wanted to. And though he was traveling on the high road, running up and down the ridges overlooking the forest, he reaches Little Red Riding Hood's mother's house long before Little Red Riding Hood was even in shouting distance and while the sun was still high in the sky. Knock, knock, said the wolf in a not very good imitation of Little Red Riding Hood's voice. Who's there? asked Little Red Riding Hood's mother. It's uh, the Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf. We don't sound a little bit like my daughter, said Little Red Riding Hood's mother. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I'm hoarse and out of breath, for I've been running away from the wolf who lives in the forest. Please, let me in, because I can see him coming for me. Oh, no, said the wolf. Well, you'd better come inside, said Little Red Riding Hood's mother, and she opened the door. And the wolf quickly cut her throat and poured her blood into a bottle. He ate most of her, but saved some of the juiciest cuts. 
These he sliced onto a platter, but he was very good with a knife, even for a wolf. Then the wolf put on the mother's pyjamas and got into bed. I'm afraid we've come to the end of our time. Tune in tomorrow evening and I'll tell you the rest of the story of Little Red Riding Hood. It's a lovely story and I'm sure you'll enjoy the rest of it. For now, this is Jack Worthing saying good night all. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Getting old. Pace yourself, Arthur. I wish I kept in shape. Oof. really have to do this. That's the last time you do that. If you here. can defy all four of these, we'll have done that around here. My old office. Take the knife. We just have to have faith. She'll come back with the coffee. We just have to burn if you will. A lady can't go without coffee these days. It a sneaking suspicion that they want some coffee. Snug as a bug on a drug.
Let's see if I can get Mrs. Oliphant to give me my old job back and my old press pass. Hastings. Old place hasn't changed at all, has it? Where did you go? When you disappeared for two weeks? Did you ever remember? I must have had too lovely a time. <laughs> I was hoping you could use a reporter. I'm afraid I've got a half dozen of them. Bloody useless, the lot of them. I've got six pieces on my desk, all about the new flavour of joy. Can you imagine? It's coconut. Didn't Dr. Vlock make that announcement some time ago? Gemma wanted to do a piece on him. I hope she hasn't fallen in a hole or somewhere. I haven't seen her in days. It's bloody frustrating, too. There's all sorts of silly rumours about the tunnels under Wellington Wells. Gas leaks, water main breaks, maintenance workers at the pub instead of their posts. That were all true. Wellington Wells would be about to fall apart. I asked her to do a story about it. Oh, well, um, I'm sure she'll turn up and everything will be peachy. I'm sure it will. Lovely to see you, Arthur. Drop by any time, really. Gemma was always digging up interesting stuff, from what I remember. Maybe I should poke around her desk.
Maybe I should drop in on Gemma at home. If she's really vanished, then maybe I can get my old job back. entirely too good. I can't keep taking joy like this.
don't feel well at all. Day's night, that was. Oh. Oh. Coming from Gemma's house. That's a bit awkward. I'm not getting in that way. <laughs> I guess someone noticed she's not been around and decided to rob the place. I swear by all that is holy, if I find one toy train in your swag bag, I'm gonna knock your last tooth down your throat! Gordo! Turn that fucking thing off and come back down here right now! If the alarm's upstairs, I'm gonna have to get past Mr. Shelty here. Ow! Oh, what the hell? Who the fuck are you? I live here. Love what you've done with the place. Just, uh, watching the day go by.
Gemma, I would never have pictured it. I'm not sure I actually want to, come to think of it. She recover in a few days. No, I will not keep my voice down. I am a law-abiding citizen. I am not upset. I'm happy as a clam. You have no right to touch me. I'm a reporter. You have no right to touch me. You know perfectly well I've taken my joy. You can't take me away. I'm not sick or unhappy. Help! Police! Where are they taking her? Why did they take her? She sounds quite sane. Did she know too much? About what? Should we just take everything? I don't think Dr. V would like that. The constabulary might notice. I don't see anything talking about Dr. V here. Where's her study? I thought vampires had to be invited in. Downer! That ought to buy me some time. Open up in there! Don't mind me. Just having a bit of a sit down. Who are you? We're friends of Gemma! Well, look at that. You've been a busy girl, haven't you, Gemma? She needs our help. It's not I think I've found everything. Doesn't look like she found all the answers yet. <laughs> 